Hello and welcome to Old School Garage. My name is Nicholas and today I'm going to be working on my 1968 L1000, specifically putting a new lift cylinder underneath the cab so that I can start to work on the engine and troubleshoot things there. So I know I've been gone for a while. I've been doing some other things, working on the shop, getting things set up so that I can start to film machining content and things of that nature. Um, in the next video, I'm more than likely going to be showing some of my machines and then future projects on the channel that are not necessarily vehicles but include machinery, welding, and all everything um, of that nature. So it will relate to this stuff at some point, and I'll get to that in the next video. Um, but there will be some changes coming to the channel here shortly. Um, I would like to say a special thank you to Protec Powder Coating for sponsoring my channel. If you have any powder coating needs, please reach out to them. Tell them that I sent you. Um, you can click on the links down in the description and then in the pinned comment. So. For this guy, I don't have a cylinder, so I have nothing that I can go off of. So I'm gonna do a little bit of explaining of how to find a cylinder, what you might need to look for, things you need to keep an eye out for. Um, I don't wanna spend a ton of money on a custom cylinder. You can obviously buy a custom cylinder and have everything exactly the way you need it. But generally it's easier to, or cheaper, to buy a cylinder that is just in stock and that you can modify slightly. So I'm gonna walk you through that process and then we'll get into modifying the cylinder that I have currently so that it will fit on this truck. So let's get into it. Now you might be saying, Nick, why are you taking the time to make your own custom cylinder when you could save time and money by you know, buying a custom one already made and just go with that one and throw it in and it's just drop in, there's no customization or anything like that. Well, the issue is not gonna really save time because it's gonna take time to be ordered and it has to be made. And then you're also not gonna save money. Um, I found through some getting some quotes that the custom cylinder that I would need to basically match this one that I have here on the 71, it was around 800 to $1,000 a unit. And you also have to buy them in batches. Most companies will not allow you to buy one cylinder at a time. They will generally require you to buy, say 50 to 100 as a minimum order. So that kind of screws the little guy here that's just trying to put, you know, lift one cab. So let's take a look at this guy because I have a lot of my dimensions here that I need that were a good starting point um, so that I could start to figure out the other truck. All right, I'm underneath the 71 here. And if you look, this is the original lift cylinder for the truck. This is made by Power Packer. Now I already have reached out to Power Packer to see if I could get a second one. And uh, they basically just said that's old and we don't want to deal with it. So power packer is not an option, but I do have a couple options in terms of stock cylinders out there. And where I have to start sorting through them is with how they're mounted at the base, um, what diameter pin is at the base, and then what type of attachment is at the top. Now I didn't want to change what's at the top because I don't want to modify the frame. As you can, if you can look closer, I can't really tell if you can see, but um, the little pieces coming down here, this little flange coming off, is actually recessed into the pipe. They probably just bent a piece of flat steel into a U-shape, cut a hole in the pipe, and then welded it into the pipe itself. So I, I don't want to tamper with that. I don't want to change that. Um, not for like historical reasons or anything like that. It's just, it'd be a pain in the butt and it would be smarter to remove it from the truck to actually attach it. Whereas if I just leave it like it is, I don't have to change anything. So this style uh, base mount, which is a pin eye through the body. This is through the body of the cylinder. Um, this option is really more of a custom thing. You can't truly get this type of a cylinder with this base mount without going more of a custom option, especially with this body length and stroke. So I had to go with a cross tube design. Now there's quite a few designs out there. You can look, look them up on Google. There's a couple lists out there. Um, and you can really just pick what you need to you know, help you in your situation. Um, I thought about going with a weld tang, but a weld tang is not wide enough at the base and would not be strong enough, or at least I felt it wouldn't be strong enough. Now, if you look at the top, you can see there's a pin eye. It's drilled through the pin as well. It's just a pin eye, just drilled through the pin. And 
that is very simple because I can simply cut whatever attachment is on the hydraulic cylinder as a stock cylinder. I can cut that off and then grind it down or mill it down to fit inside the specific flange that is you know, already built. So it's, it's kind of a difficult process to hunt through the catalogs and try and find everything. But your main thing you're gonna to wanna to find is your on-center measurement here and then what your body length will be. Whatever your body length will be is generally what's gonna decide what your, um, your, your stroke will be. So you won't have too many options with that, but more stroke the better because the farther the, t the cab will tilt forward. Because the restriction on this cab tilting forward is not by the safety cable that's tethered to the frame and then to the frame that underneath the aluminum cab, but it's actually the hydraulic cylinder that limits it from going any further. So you could make it to where it's reliant on the safety cable, but I wouldn't recommend that. So what I came up with was this guy. Now you can see it's a little bit bigger and it's not going on this truck. So my body length can be a little bit longer and I'll get to that in a second, but it's called an HMW 2016. It's from Hercules Ceiling Products. There you go. And it's an inch and a quarter rod as compared to my inch rod on the stock power packer. Um, and then the body is a two inch or yeah, it's two or two and a half inch. doesn't really matter. It's gonna work for my application. It's just a little bit bigger than what's here already. So the base mount is a cross tube design. You can see that this is a tube simply welded to the body of the cylinder. Whereas the power packer one originally is an actual turned piece of metal and is simply welded to the base of the cylinder there, giving you an offset from the bottom of the cylinder here all the way to your pin there. So, a couple of issues. One, this tube is too wide for my base mount on the 68. So, I'm gonna have to trim some of this down, take, I think it's an eighth inch off each side to shrink it down. And I may also have to alleviate some space on this flange bracket right here. Now, the rod or the pin is inch and a quarter. This is an inch and a quarter diameter. And then the factory one is one inch. So I also have a one inch um, flange on the other truck. So, which means I need to shave down some, uh, basically an eighth of inch on each side and then drill my hole through that. So I will be losing some stroke off of this. I've already cut the cross tube off this end. I wanted to just buy a cylinder that had it super long so I could make it look cleaner and have whatever stroke I wanted, but I didn't have that option. So I'm gonna be losing about 5 16ths of a stroke, which really is nothing in the grand scheme of, of things. So let's go put this on the other truck and I'll explain a little bit further with that. All right, now that I have the cylinder actually in place and it's on the pin, the base pin, you can see where the body length becomes a very important factor in something this confined of a space. So to get a 16 inch stroke and still have this size body is basically what I was looking for the whole time because I knew I could trim this pin down or this rod down to fit whatever size I need, but I couldn't change a couple things like my space for the body. So whenever you're looking for your own cylinder, very much you need to be aware of this body length. Um, you may get confused or sidetracked and look for stroke and continue down that road, but always go back and double check your body length because generally as you go up in the next size of stroke, you're gonna start to see a massive increase in the size or the length of the body. So as you can see down here at the base, my threads are not fully exposed, so I can't fully put a nut down to make sure that the cylinder is secure in here and isn't gonna walk sideways or anything like that. So I do need to trim down this cross tube as mentioned before. And then as you can see up here, the piston rod is not reaching beyond this center point. So I will be extending this rod out and then I will be drilling farther back and I will be losing some distance off of that 16 inch stroke, which I'm fine with because the original power packer on my 71 only has a 15 and a half to 15 and three quarter stroke. 
So I will be getting around that once I'm you know, all said and done with a quarter inch of material on top for extra uh, support. But I'm gonna be losing some of that 16 inch stroke, but I'm still within a good range to where the cylinder will be usable. So another issue that I do see with this uh, more modern cylinder or stock cylinder is that these bungs for the fittings are a little bit tall. So I may be encountering an issue here in the future in regards to the air intake system with the turbocharger here coming this way it might hit the fitting. I'm gonna have to go down that path when I get there. But at this moment, I'm not gonna be worrying about it. So most of my issues are addressable. Um, so now it's just a matter of executing the plan of shaving down this guy right here. I need to get an official measurement for how much I need to shave down depth wise on the rod. And then shave down this stuff down here. I'll probably end up doing this first, test it and drill it so that I can make sure that it fits correctly and uh, then we'll go forward with the rest of our plan. So next thing, I'm gonna set this guy up on my little table and I'm going to grind these flats on both sides, take about an eighth inch off, and then I will set up for drilling and go from there and do the drilling. And then we will work on this bottom cross tube. So let's get to it. All right, now I'm just gonna grind my flats with just a standard grinding wheel because one, I don't have my mill right now, so I can always come back and refine it later. And then two, I do wanna show the process, if say you didn't have a mill, how you could get away with this. Now this doesn't have to be precision because those flanges are gonna flex, they're gonna move, especially when the cab is tilting forward and under tension. So you still wanna try and keep them flat. You need to keep in mind that the cylinder itself can rotate. So be aware of that. I've gone ahead and gr ground some guide marks. So for as far deep as I need to go on this, I can't cross that point, or at least I don't wanna cross that point. When the cylinder or rod is bottomed out to the cylinder body, that's this line right here. So I 100% definitely don't wanna go past that. Even though the operation of the cylinder is probably gonna stop right about there, I won't be like going farther forward because the rod will be extended while it's connected to the truck. I still don't want to go past that just in case it's ever pulled off that you don't have a sharp edge cutting a seal or anything like that. So I'm just going to slowly grind this stuff away. Keep checking it with a set of calipers until I get down to one inch, one inch here. Just be mindful and try to make it even um, and then keep everything straight. Again, it's not, doesn't have to be perfect and I can always come back to make it perfect on the mill. But for right now, I'm just gonna do it like this and uh, make it look pretty by hand. So let's get to it. Now, even though I'm doing this you know, by hand and it's not with a machine, I'm still double checking. I'm making sure I'm only taking little bits of increments of material off. I don't wanna keep or just start taking off massive chunks because if I start taking massive chunks off, I'm probably gonna overshoot my measurement. So right now we're still pretty even. So we're good to go there. We just gotta keep taking material off. As I'm closing in on my final dimension, I'm gonna take a measurement of my tall side, making sure I'm not measuring into the shoulder. And I am almost at an eighth of an inch. So I need to keep tracking that depth on both sides. If I feel like one is more deep or deeper in than the other, I need to keep track of that because if I let one side get out of hand, then I'm gonna to start to lose my dimensions here. And then I could go deeper on one side and then the cylinder will be misaligned. So again, just taking your time, slowly working it away and you'll eventually get it.
right, so now I've got the rod set up here in the drill press. I've got some aluminum protecting the rod, the chrome on the rod, so that I'm not scratching it or damaging it in any way. You can use copper as well, but I'm just using aluminum. That's what I had laying around. So I've got it spotted in right now. We're good to go. Um, I'm gonna drill a pilot hole and then my final 5 8 hole um, while supporting the other end of my, the rod with my hand. If this was on a mill, you could just use machinist jacks or something like that. But I'm just using a cheap drill press and a cheap vise here. So everything's bolted down. We should be good to go. So let's get to drilling and uh, we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna use some cutting oil, but nothing crazy, just to keep the bit lubricated. So let's get to it. All right, I've got the 5 8 bit in and we're good to go. We're lined up still, nothing moved. Um, I did turn the speed down to like 300 RPM, so hopefully that's slow enough. I might step it down one more time, um, but we'll see. So now we got the actual drilling here, so hopefully this little drill press can do it. I'm pretty sure it will be able to, but we'll see. looks like aluminum it is okay all right so we're good we're good all the way through let's remove our bit you could see the drill bit stopping here and there and that was because the belts were slipping probably could use new belts in this drill press but i don't tend to do heavy drilling with this But if you take a look all the way through, looks like a pretty good surface finish, especially for just drilling on a drill press. So let's get it out of the drill press now and then go finish the other end of the cylinder. All right, now I've mocked the cylinder up on the truck. It's just sitting down inside here. And the reason I'm doing this is to check for my alignment. So squeeze in here. And if you see, the cylinder is not very straight. Now that has to do with the cross tube at the bottom not being the correct width. If you look, you can see it crosses over into the threaded section. I have to cut that down. And that should bring the base of the cylinder over so that I can straighten it out 
and match those flanges up there. Or at least that's the idea currently. Um, I might have to do some deburring on the welds down here to see, like, or to push the cylinder, the base of the cylinder fully over against that base on the truck. But we'll see when we get there. I don't think I'll need to do that, but you can see the cylinder fits. No crazy issues up there. Um, I'll show my shoulder screw later, the one that I turned. I did make it stainless. I may have to change it later, but let's get to modifying this bottom cross tube and then we'll double check everything again and make sure it is sucked this cylinder, the base of this cylinder, farther over so that it's straight. All right, so I finished grinding on the cylinder and I ended up having to take more material off this guy right here just so that it will sit more flush against the bracket. And then I did some grinding on the bracket as well down here. I didn't have to actually clearance any of these gussets, but I did end up having to clearance some of the weld that was left. We're good to go now. The, the cylinder is straight, and I'll so, show that in a second, but let me get it installed. Actually, I gotta show my shoulder bolt before I end up putting it on. So this guy I just turned out of like a three quarter inch stainless bolt. I'm, I think the stainless is fine. We'll end up seeing in the future, depending on how it wears, but we should be good for the time being. Um, I don't think we'll have any issues. So let's get to installing the cylinder and then we'll check it for square. All right, let's get this guy on here. I did end up drilling this hole out or this flange out. This side was only a half inch, so I had to drill it out to five eighths to match my shoulder screw I turned. All right, let me just snug it by hand. We can come back and tighten it later, but we have good movement. Nothing's bound up. If I have to do anything, I'll probably end up um, grinding this guy to a rounded edge so that it doesn't catch on the flat I ground. So let's check for how per or parallel it is with the frame, and then we should be done. All right, so as you can see, we got the cylinder in. It's kind of hard to film this, but it's nice and straight with the frame. We're not twisted at all. Now, the flanges are slightly bent at the top, and I think that was from the previous cylinder, um, but they should tighten down um, as through some use, and then probably tightening that top bolt more. But you can see we got tiny bit of movement on both ends so we can have some grease in there and it's not going to just wear the pins down immediately. Um, we'll just have to monitor that top pin because it is stainless. Um, check for galling. But this joker came out looking nice. All right, well, that's a little bit more progress done on this truck. Obviously, we got the cylinder mounted, so now we can work on hooking a pump up to it and we can actually lift the cab forward and truly see what's going on underneath. 
Um, I've got a lot coming on this truck as well as the this other L1000 standing behind me. Um, I'm trying to get things to where they're rolling, not necessarily um, driving, but at least moving around on their own. That is my goal currently. Um, so obviously getting this guy running, and I'll put a link up here if you want to see that if you haven't seen it. Getting this truck running was a huge step, so now I can start to work on the drivetrain and everything like that. But you know, it's just little steps like this of making the rod and or the cylinder and finally getting things ready to tilt the cab forward. So I hope you gathered some knowledge from this video or possibly just got some enjoyment out of it. Um, if you needed help with uh, outfitting your truck with a cab lift cylinder, hopefully this helped a little bit. Um, but in the next video, it won't be about this truck. It will be about machinery, as I've stated before. Uh, it will not be about any truck, any vehicle. It'll be solely machinery. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a change. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how I want to take the direction of the channel. I'd like to make it more industrial, but still keep everything, you know, about the trucks and stuff like that. I'm not going to stop posting about these guys. So again, thank you for staying to this point. If you have, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. I hope you had a uh, wonderful Labor Day weekend, and y'all have a blessed one.